welcome back everyone to the Dark Forest. Listen to me on the go and download your favorite scary stories on my Apple Podcast and Spotify under Tales from the Dark Forest. A shout out to my channel members and my patrons. You guys rock. Now, let's get spooky. I have been dating my girlfriend Larissa for about six months now, and everything has been going great. The only problem is, is that her friends don't like me. Larissa has plenty of friends I like, and who really like me, but Abby, Paula, and Christina are the only outliners. What I hate more than anything else is how they all act like they like me, but anyone paying attention can tell that they really don't. One night, we were all hanging out together at a party and Abby, the lead friend who doesn't like me, mentioned camping as a subject and people started talking about it. What about you, Joel? She turned to me. You strike me as the kind of guy who likes to camp. Nope, I have no desire to camp whatsoever. The last time I went camping was six years ago. And since I didn't enjoy it one bit, I haven't been back since. Really? She tilted her head at me. I could have sworn that you told me you went camping recently once. Last year, on the West Coast, in the first week of August. No, I was in New York on business that week. Abby's face fell at this. What's the matter, Abby? You look a little befuddled. I could hear the smirk in my voice. I just could have sworn you went camping then, she said in an almost meek voice. I could tell something was up and I wanted to know what it was. Really? Why is that? I certainly never said anything about camping. You must have me confused with somebody else. I guess so. She looked down at her drink like she wanted to sink through the floor. Paula and Christina were glaring at her like she had just done something beyond stupid, which she probably did. I could feel the grin on my face stretch even wider as I saw Larissa watch it happen and silently took it all in. It was time to finally say what I was thinking. Look, Abby, I don't know what the hell your problem is with me or what's going on, but I'm sick of it and it needs to stop now. If you're going to talk about me, say it to my face and not behind my back to them. I pointed to Paula and Christina. So spit it out. She sat there silently for a moment while I stared at her. But just as she opened her mouth to speak, Paula spoke up instead. Abby's been telling us for months that she heard your voice when she went for a weekend trip in the Nora's cabin in the woods. One night, there was a group of intruders outside, and when she heard a few people speak, she swore up and down that one of them sounded just like you. Well, I wasn't even remotely near there because I was clear across the country for work. I swear, I thought it was you, Abby muttered feebly. Is that why you kept constantly making subtle jabs about why I shouldn't date Joel? Larissa snarled her voice full of barely contained fury. All she could do was nod. We're sorry, Joel, Christina said quickly. Very sorry, Paula agreed. I'm sorry too, Abby looked at me. I hope we can be friends. I laughed. It sounded harsh even to my ears and it made Abby and the others flinch. A sign I got plenty of satisfaction from. Go to hell and stay there. With friends like you, I wouldn't need enemies. I could understand you thinking I'm the wrong person and there being a mix-up, but you never flat out asked or said anything to me. All you did was talk behind my back for months. So yeah, I'm not exactly jumping up and down to be friends. Please, we're really sorry. Don't you believe us? Abby asked her face a mask of pure panic. Christina and Paula were silently watching me with a similar expression. Do I look stupid to you? 
I wouldn't believe you if you told me the sky was blue. You're sorry, all right, but not sorry you did it. You're sorry you got caught being wrong and now you look beyond stupid. So don't go giving me that let's be friends BS. I'm not your friend and I never want to be your friend. Let's go, Larissa. She nodded and didn't so much as look back at her friends as we left. I can't believe that. I'm so sorry, Joel, she said when we got in the car and we were on the road. Well, now you know. I just don't know what the make of her claiming she heard someone who sounded identical to me. She's an idiot and completely full of it. You know the saying of everyone has a twin somewhere? But even if she did hear someone that sounded just like you, what could we do about it now? Right. We spent a lot of time together after that. Larissa severed all contact with her so-called friends, and it was a very happy time for us. For the first few weeks after the incident at the party, Paula, Christina, and Abby repeatedly tried to contact Larissa for days on end, but she cheerfully ignored them every time. Once or twice, they even tried to contact me through various means, but I was more than happy to do the same as Larissa. But then, one morning it all abruptly stopped, and neither of us paid much attention to it. One weekend, we went to her cousin, Beatrice's lake house, for an overnight visit. It was a crisp fall night, pleasantly cool and windless. The smell of burning leaves was in the air as we had hamburgers on the grill before making s'mores with Beatrice and her husband, Luke. Once that was over, we chatted about nothing in particular as night slowly set in, and we sat on the deck overlooking the water and watched the stunning view of the lake. The tall pines that surrounded it, and the crescent moon that shimmered off the lake's surface. From my right side, I heard Larissa's phone ring, and I didn't even give it much thought as she answered. Hey Danielle, what's up? She asked her best friend on the other end of the line. Larissa was silent for a moment as Danielle spoke. You're kidding me. She stood up as she asked the question. I could see from the look on her face that something was wrong. Luke and Beatrice also noticed something was amiss. But we were all silent as Larissa listened intently to whatever was being said. Okay she finally said, after what felt like an eternity. Thank you for letting me know. Keep me posted. With that, she ended the call and tossed her phone onto the chair. Abby, Christina, and Paula are missing, she said to me, before turning to look at Beatrice and Luke. They went camping with some friends, and no one has seen them since. They were only recently reported missing, and the authorities have no idea what happened. The only thing they found was their campsite. Everything was intact and there was no sign of anything amiss, aside from a single long scratch on their car. I'm so sorry, Larissa, I said before I reached out and gave her a hug while Beatrice let her husband inside without a word. The night was calm, almost uncannily quiet. The two of us stood there on the deck for what seemed like an eternity before we joined our hosts indoors. The lake house was beautiful, a two-story cabin with a solid wooden exterior. It had a very modern luxury, a great stone fireplace, and a stunning glass enclosed porch. The fireplace was in the same room as the entertainment system, which we were about to put to use when I heard it. A gentle knock on the front door, so quiet you could barely hear it like whoever was on the other end was afraid of making too much noise. I glanced up and saw Luke and Beatrice looking at each other to make sure that they really heard someone knocking. Then, almost as if whoever was knocking can hear their thoughts, a second knock came, louder than the first, and it was still relatively gentle. Hey, is anybody there? I heard a faint male voice asking. I don't know why, but for some reason the voice gave me chills. There wasn't any other house around for miles, 
so it wasn't easy for anyone to just stumble across the property. I could see our hosts wrestling with the same idea as they silently looked at each other, clearly unsure about what to do and wary about whatever was going on. But before they could make another move, a third knock came, much louder and more instinct than before. If anybody's there, we need help. A different male voice spoke. This voice sounded far more nervous than the first one. Don't worry, guys. Everything is fine. Hearing Abby's voice made my stomach clench. I looked at Larissa, and she looked like she was about to faint. Our two hosts saw our expression and knew something wasn't right. I don't like this, guys. Something is wrong. I don't like this, guys. Something is wrong. The sound of Paula's voice made Larissa put a hand over her mouth out of fear. As quietly as I could, I moved over to her and put an arm around her while trying to ignore my own feelings of crushing fear. Across from me, Luke and Beatrice hadn't moved an inch from their seats on the sofa. The four of us sat there waiting for a moment, listening closely for any more sounds or voices. After what felt like an eternity, we heard someone walking away. Once we waited a few minutes to make sure whatever or whoever was at the door was gone, Larissa explained what happened, and Beatrice immediately called the police. When they got here, we explained what we had heard and what we knew about our missing friends. The authorities took down everything she said, thanked her, and said they'd do what they could, but not promising anything. We said that we understood, then thanked them for whatever they could do. They never did find out what happened to Abby and the others. And every time Larissa and I get invited to go camping with friends, we respectfully decline. <laughs>